Hi everyone, it's Andrew with Novus Computers and NovusComputers.com and on today's Computing 101 we are going to take a look at a subject which is still the cause of some confusion and questions for a lot of folks even though at its core it's actually quite simple and that magical subject is the cloud. More specifically what is the cloud? And by cloud we're not talking about the little white puffy things populating the sky every so often but rather the digital cloud. This cloud does take its name from those clouds in the sky, as well as its abstract concept. However, its uses and attainability are quite different, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So what is the cloud? Well, the basic explanation is that the cloud is a distributed network of shared resources that are connected over the internet and distributed to clients on demand. Now, that doesn't seem very basic, does it? Let's start simple. Most clouds are comprised of servers. Groups of servers to be exact. What's a server? It's basically just a more powerful computer that is designed to perform certain sets of jobs and to do those jobs well. They're also designed to be reliable and be able to be repaired quickly in the event that something does go wrong. These servers are in most cases spread out around the world. These servers are then able to talk to or communicate with one another over the internet and share whatever data or information they happen to store. In essence, if one server has some data, all the servers can access and share that same data. This data is then duplicated across several of those server groups in a way that should a server or a set of servers go down for any reason, the data they contain isn't lost. It simply resides in another alternate location on another alternate set of servers. So with all of this working together, it creates the basis for a cloud. So the next question is, where do I get one and how do I use it? Well, actually, the answer to that is probably simpler than you might think. In fact, there's a good chance you're already using the cloud every day. Let's take a look at some of the things the cloud can do on just a basic consumer level. Okay, so one of the oldest technologies to use the cloud has to be good old email. While it didn't start out as a cloud-based technology, it didn't take long for it to become one once the cloud became a reality. There are lots of email services out there these days, but the three most common have to be Gmail, Outlook, and Yahoo Mail. There are other email providers out there from domain hosts like GoDaddy, and a lot of times your internet service provider will also have email available to you. The ability to access email at any place at any time is definitely one of the major factors that has not only kept email relevant throughout the years, it also makes it one of the biggest applications that use the cloud currently. Another very common application for the cloud is for file sharing and syncing. There are a lot of services out there these days when it comes to having your files stored in the cloud, but here's some of the ones you might recognize. File syncing has become huge due to the fact that it's extremely convenient to have your files available, not just on your home PC or your laptop, but on your phone, your tablet, your office computer, and wherever else you can think of. Additionally, since those files are being stored in the cloud, you never have to worry about losing them should you get your laptop stolen or your PC goes up in smoke. None of those files actually reside on any of those devices, so if any of those devices do get damaged or lost, those files are still available to you on another device. Now, just like ordinary files, photos are another popular cloud application and one that many people don't even realize they use as an actual part of the cloud. Popular services like Instagram, Flickr, and Photobucket allow you to post and store photos online in the cloud. Another widely used set of services, however, are Google Photos and the Apple iCloud. These services, when set up, will automatically sync any pictures you take with your iPhone or your Android phone to the cloud. And this effectively both backs up your photos and also allows you to access those photos from a desktop or a laptop computer anywhere you have an internet connection. It also allows you to save space on your phone since you can then delete the phone's copy of the image once it's backed up to the cloud and the cloud copy will be retained. Of course, a major player in the cloud lately has been music streaming, and there have been a lot of services that have appeared, with each offering their own little niche in the market, with some offering a more radio-like experience, while others cater to more of an on-demand style offering. An important point here to differentiate the difference between a cloud-based streaming service and a more traditional music purchasing store like iTunes is that a cloud service usually doesn't store any music on your devices, but rather streams it from the cloud each time you play it. Traditional music services store an actual music file on your device, which requires that file to be present in order to play the song. 
For instance, if you have a iTunes purchase file from your computer and it sits on your computer but not on your phone, you'll only be able to play that song on your computer. However, nowadays, there are some services like iTunes that do allow you to upload your music to the cloud and play it on an Apple or an iCloud-enabled device, just like a streaming service, thus giving you your own little mini music service with your own self-supplied music. Finally, device backup is another very powerful use for the cloud that brings off-site backup down to an easy and affordable level. Having a backup of your important info that doesn't reside within the same area as the device it's stored on is one of the fundamental concepts of backing up data. Fortunately, several services such as Carbonite, Backblaze, and Mosey offer extremely convenient software that allows you to set it and forget it, keeping your stuff safe at all times in the cloud. So let's recap. There are a wide variety of different services online today that utilize the cloud in some form or another, and by using or subscribing to one or more of these services, you are in fact using the cloud. Of course, this is just a very basic overview of the cloud, and there are many other uses for it too. For example, medical researchers may use the cloud to help find cures for diseases, or businesses may rely on the cloud for things like file storage or financial calculations. And moving forward, it's also very likely that it will continue to be used in an ever-expanding list of roles. Well, that's a basic overview of the cloud and some of the things it's used for. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. Also, if this video helped you in any way, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Again, I'm Andrew with Novus Computers and NovusComputers.com. That's N-O-V-U-S dash is in a hyphen or a minus sign. The word Computers.com. Thanks for watching and see you next time.